start off up here showing you that this is the driver that you have chosen. When you click on properties, it allows you to select a different port if you'd like, whether it be the Graphic USB, whether you want to go to a file, and then just the name. Then this little button here, if you want to immediately see the queue, you just click on it and there it is. So I'll go ahead and minimize that. Just below it are three tabs. The three tabs are different options. You have the general tab, you have the layering tab, and then you have the advanced tab. Up here you'll notice this little craft robo, what looks like a little craft robo. And what that basically is, kind of give you the orientation of the back of the machine, because it, what, what, it reflects what's in this window here, which is the layout. And what you see here is how everything is laid out, as it would be on the material that you're cutting. So the Craft Robo would be down here if you were looking at this. Now what's nice about this area here is this will, this will actually reflect all the settings going on here. Now like for instance my square, if I changed it to say 50%, which is half the size, then it, it reflects it here. Because this actually represents your 8.5 by 11 sheet that you're using. Of course, the sheet will be larger, it'll be longer if you set up the sheet that way. These other settings are media size, which is the size of this area here. Now it's user defined, but it can, you can set it to letter, which is a typical setting. This is the job size. Now you notice I ha how I put it at 50%. I wouldn't necessarily suggest you doing that. I would always keep it 100% and then change the size within Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. The reason is, is inevitably you'll forget that this is 50%. You'll send the, the uh, design to your plotter and then you'll say, why is it so small? So just keep in mind that's a <clears throat> little tip for you. This will keep it proportional. In other words, if you change one size, it will, it will automatically reflect in the other size, so it keeps everything proportional. Down here is the position. Now, this little button here will, is interactive. In other words, if I drag this square over here, you'll see the cutter tool actually move to that point. Same with this button. You know, sometimes you'd like to see how big a job is. If you click on that, it'll actually send the cutter going up and down to the si actual size of the job. So you can kind of get a, a visual of how much room it's going to take. These three buttons are kind of fun. Uh, this one is just basically positioning on the sheet, whether you want it in the corner, whether you want it in the center, you want it center in the sheet, and of course you want it on the other side. This is your rotation. It rotates in four different directions. Now this is true except if you're doing print and cut, then it only has one position. This is your mirroring. Now I don't have any text on here, but when you click on it, it'll actually reverse the direction. This is a really good feature for if you're doing like lettering that's going to go on the inside of a window. Then you want to go ahead and mirror it so that you put it on, on the window correctly. Down here you have your zoom tools. You can see the whole sheet. You can actually zoom in on the object itself or objects. You can select your whatever zoom you would like and then of course you have your select tool. So that's the general tab. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. Just keep in mind that this area is going to reflect what's going on over here. I'm going to go to the advanced page because there's a lot of information on the second tab. So let me go to the advanced page. And it's very simple. If you got lettering that's overlapping and you want it to weld it together, even though Adobe Illustrator has Pathfinder, which will weld everything together, this will do it for you automatically. Convert strokes to outlines. Sometimes in Adobe Illustrator, you can have a single line but have a certain stroke thickness. It will actually convert that stroke thickness to two lines because that's really what you need. And then, of course, the units that you want to work in. Now, there's it's not showing here, but down at the bottom there will be a use registration marks. That's in case if you're doing a, a print and then a cut or you're cutting your printed images. Use registration marks will make sure that it will go ahead and tell the Craft Robo to read the registration marks before cutting. Now let's go to our layering tab. This is a real powerful tool. Let me get out of here first and create some different shapes three squares. Watch what happens. When I go to Cutting Master 2, 
Click on Cut Plot. By the way, this is selection only. If you selected any spot, this will show up and it'll be check marked. So I'm going to turn it off. And then notice that the three colors are here. Okay, so what this is saying is you can cut by color. So if you have three different colors, you can cut by them. Not only that, but you can also assign a different cut medias for them. For instance, as I was talking earlier about RoboMaster, if you've gone through that, I use a lot of Bristol paper. So I can just click in here, choose Bristol paper, and it's a perfect setting for me. Generally, the force is set to 30, line type is solid, so that's perfect. I can also change the settings if I want to. I can increase or decrease the settings. Secondly, I can also create a new one, either save it as it is, so if I want to increase the force on the Bristol paper, I just click on save and I'll always have that particular force. But I can also save as in the sense that I can start my own type of Bristol paper. So I'll call it my Bristol paper. And there it is. So now we're all set. Now it's going to go ahead and assign this particular line to that particular cut. Now if you don't want to happen, you can click here and it'll assign all of them to, to that media setting. So it's basically real simple. Now if you don't want a certain color to cut, then you just check mark which, which lines you don't want to cut. And that becomes important. Now if you're familiar with Illustrator and Corel Draw, you know that they work with layers. And layers is really great. And I'll be getting into that later on when I get into print and cut. But if you work with layers and you have certain layers that you want to cut and not cut, you can also use your layers or cut by layer. Down here it says if you can use your plotter controller. I wouldn't recommend that too much. This basically controls everything unless if you're totally familiar. But this is just getting you into another step before he gets it out to the cutter. So I would just ignore this altogether. If you forget what your settings are and you want to reset them, that's what this button is. And then there's a test cut right here that will send a test cut as the plotter controller or the craft robot controller does as well. Well that's it for Cutting Master 2. You've got the three tabs and then you've got all the different options. Well once you've got everything set, then you just click send. Now what send does is it sends it to the queue. What's nice about this program is right here it'll show you the status of what's in the queue at the time. So I click on send and it says it's holding and it can't open port because currently right now I don't have my Craft Robo connected. But if I did then it would show it up here and show that it's cutting and it's sending the job down. So Cutting Master 2 as you can see is pretty simple to use. If you need help on Cutting Master 2, that's where you go to the queue. And remember, this button gets you to that point. And then you click on Help, Help Topics. And here's the whole manual. When I get into Help, I show you how to use the search effectively. So I'll close this out. And that's all there is to Cutting Master 2. It's a pretty simple program. Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact us today.